Hello, regular viewer, loyal subscriber, welcome to Hard Space Shipbreaker. This is an early access game. Uh, we're on version 015 at the moment, and um, clearly it's a kind of near future blue collar, um, three dimensional, zero gravity ship disassembly simulator. Uh, you start as a uh, blue collar worker with a billion credits in debt and you're trying to work off that debt. As to why you're in debt, well it seems to be some form of economic warfare. The uh, earth has been left uh, as an absolute disaster zone. Anybody with the capability has already paid to leave and set up colonies elsewhere in the solar system, uh, leaving only those uh, poor people who cannot afford to leave the Earth, and so some of them take the gamble and uh, undertake incredibly dangerous um, ship disassembly work in zero gravity to pay off these massive debts to ensure that their family has a future away from Earth. So it's all very, uh, it's all very jolly, and um, it's actually an incredibly relaxing game potentially, with uh, peppered with moments of absolute stress as you try and move um, reactors before they blow up and uh, accidentally cut pipes which then jet superheated plasma uh, into your vicinity uh, and accidentally set fire to things that you're meant to be salvaging for money. Anyway, I thought I'd uh, show you around um, a ship just to get started. Um, I've been doing this game for some time, um, so we'll just uh, drop into career mode here. Um, this is a personal recommendation. This ship is really good. It's it's currently lacking in ship designs, but the core gameplay loop is um, very compelling, and um, it's a it's a good way of spending the evening. Right, so let's just check my equipment is up. I've got a laser cutter, which operates in two modes, a pinpoint mode and a split saw. And um, I've got a grapple, which is kind of like a gravity gun, um, but it uses tether fields to push and pull items around. We've got our thruster pack for our spacesuit and the scanner, and of course the spacesuit itself, helmet and um, you know vacuum suit. Uh, not a compression suit, um, so it is very bulky and moving around is a little bit clunky, um, but that just it goes towards the feel. So we'll start our shift, uh, view the ship catalogue and you get a selection of different ships. So starting from grade one, this is your training ship called the Mackerel, um, and then you've got the sort of normal mackerels here, which are just kind of easy mode. And they go up to medium. Uh, and then at grade four ships, we introduce the gecko. Um, the gecko is kind of a large scale um, transport or cargo hauler. Um, and then when we get up to the top tiers five and six, uh, you might find the stargazer appearing, which is kind of like a gecko, but it's thinner. Uh, so it's only two units wide rather than three and it has a lot more compact machinery inside and with everything sandwiched so close together um, these things are difficult to disassemble cleanly. But if we go back to grade three here we have the kind of top tier mackerels. The mackerel is the smallest ship that you have to deal with. Um, we get to see what kind of total value is in here. Five mil, five mil, 4.3 5.7 so this is a cargo hauler I'm gonna select this and uh, let's go and have a look around all right so there she is in the bay we start here um, on the um, on the base and we just float gently over to uh, the ship here it's not completely friction free it's um, it's designed for gameplay balance because doing this in um, total Salvage zero gravity would be 
very difficult just to apply the brakes here. Alright, by the way, if you get motion sick, this uh, it's good to just go slow. This is my um, split cutter. I'm just going to cut through these yellow bits here, which are uh, cutting points. And then I use my grapple to fire it into the processor. Valuable object processed. There we go. Credit deposited. So there are three places you can put stuff, perhaps four if you count getting rid of it. But um, you have the processor, which is for um, valuable metals. You have the furnace, which is for kind of low value metals. And then you have the barge down here, which are for complete uh, components that you can salvage. So we're just going to go down and make entry to the ship. This is the airlock door. Airlock pressure levels dropping. Now the, the game does model um, atmospheric pressure, so if you do um, accidentally cut through the skin of the ship, um, when it's pressurized inside, the whole thing airlock will explode. Airlock pressure levels increasing. Right, so here we have the inside of a ship. Now when the icon changes to this while I'm on my um, uh, grabber, I can just pull these things loose. Right, that's the atmosphere regulator, it means I can depressurize the hull if I need to. What have we got in here? We've got a couple of bed units in here, which is interesting. Uh, this is a data drive, so I want to pick this up. Completes a particular mission. I've got a work order here on the right. So we see the uh, game is expecting me to salvage three computer terminals. Um, the nacelles, which are kind of the stubby bits on the side. Nanocarbon, which is the ship's skin. Metal, which is usually the ship's interior. Four electrical items and the reactor. Um, this is fuel. Might as well take that. There's a repair kit in here. Let's just uh, work our way into the cockpit. Good, it's under pressure. So we can have a look in the cockpit, see what's cooking. And while I'm here, I can just take off some of these items that are later going to be removed anyway. Storage bins. Right, while I'm in atmosphere, my uh, oxygen... Um, charges up. So I'm currently at 800 seconds oxygen level, which is the number you see down in my O2 meter, uh, bottom center. And there's an 11 and a half minutes on the, uh, on the shift. So what I'm going to do is we'll evacuate the air and then we'll start cutting the shell out. Air pressure level decreasing. I'm just going to activate the airlock to airlock open up pressure levels dropping. the doors front and back. There we go. Make sure the doors there are okay. Right. Now, first things first, uh, we have cut points here. You can use your precision laser just to cut through. And the thing about the precision laser is if your beam intersects anything explosive, it will blow up, uh, so you've got to be careful where you're aiming it. You see the floor just begins to drop away as we cut through here. So this is classic mackerel design. Um, the roof and the floors can be uh, removed pretty quickly and easily from the inside. But here, if I uh, cut through here, for example, that's going to intersect with this soft crate. So what I might want to do is just gently move it out of the way so I can cut that without damaging it. Okay. 
So we can just use our jets to gently bump this out from its hidey hole. Now I know that the uh, outside panels of this are nano carbon, and you can see bottom middle, uh, it tells you when you hover over something and where it's meant to go to. Now I don't have to be perfect with this, these little blocks that go into the furnace, um, I'm not going to worry about, I'm just going to salvage this whole thing. Right, so there are a couple of small cut points out here for the airlock. Valuable object oh. processed. Uh, two. And you see this, the game wants me to put this in the barge, which is down below. And the barge has kind of a net, which will get full up, but I'll just pump that down there with my gribber. Gribber? Grabber. Salvage deposit Grabber. accepted. Credits transferred. Okay. So something is keeping this roof from flying up. And it's a cut point that I've forgotten. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Whoops, turn the scanner on accidentally. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so pop the lid on that one. Now you can either manually grab these and then fire them, or you can use what are called tethers to grab and drag. Ooh. Whoops, I've lost a soft crate in there, never mind. Processing valuable object. Credit awarded. Right, so now the nice thing about mackerels is that they can be disassembled pretty quickly and easily just by using the cutting points provided. Some of the other ships are a bit harder to do, don't come apart as easily. see there is a little gap just opened up there and what you can do is just check tether to the master jack over there and if you've indeed done your job correctly look at that smooth as butter just take that off fire that down now I'm gonna cancel the um, tether because it's pulling it way out of whack but what we can do is cut these side panels off. See, if this was zero G, you know, proper frictionless space, then it wouldn't stop. But there's a little bit of inertia in this, so. A couple of tethers will yank that large bit of nanocarbon into the processor. Now here's an interesting thing. These bright yellow covers, um, they are resistant to being just yanked, uh, burnt. So you have to find something that you don't care about particularly. And in my case that's usually a light bulb. And then use an impact to just remove the cover. You can burn it off, but I find it... It will tend to um, damage things. Right, there are usually some... Yeah, there we go. Little lights down at the bottom there. Yeah, cut those off. Just pull that close to me. And over the top. And I'm going to power it up and then just go... Ping! And that breaks the cover on top of it. There we go. So now I should be able to open this up. Now you see the uh, barrel in front of me with the little snowflake on it. That is a coolant barrel. If my beam intercepts that in any way, it will explode and the whole thing will be covered in liquid nitrogen. So let's try and avoid that. They tend to be quite... Um, quite fragile as well, so if you bash them about too much, they explode. Let's yank that out. Got about five minutes left in this shift, Cutter. Well, that's good. Don't bite off more than you can chew. We wrap. Okay. Salvage secured. Now, I could spend Account some time just applied. removing these for the moment and going for my work order, or I can plan my next bit. Let's just remove some of this garbage from inside the uh, ship. 
Now, with a mackerel, the uh, barge doesn't tend to get filled up. With some of the larger ships, the net itself runs out of space and it becomes a lot harder to successfully place barge items in the net without breaking things. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. You can see how this will get just quite relaxing as you kind of systematically take these items and um, do your thing with them. Let's just remove this panel. Now we've cut it out. Just walk it over there. Right, we've got more cut points here that need delicate handling. So I take one of the less valuable uh, light bulbs. Right. I don't know where those light bulbs go once you're doing that. They ping all over the place, so usually I'll just grab another one. This is probably quite dangerous, but uh, ping. Right, here is a nacelle. Now this thing you have to cut from the inside typically. So you cut these little tab points in here. Oh there's my There's my girl. Right. Let's just come up here and we'll ping him again. Alright, let's just push the nacelle out. Yeah. And then we'll just just tether that down into the uh, bottom. There we go. Can I see the light bulb in here? But what I will do while I'm in here, see the fuel tank back here, and there is a fuel line. Now, two ways to tell if a fuel line is um, active. First of all, the light's on. Secondly, if you put your hand on it, you can hear the fuel running through the pipe. So what we're going to do is shut, shut off the fuel and shunt it all into the fuel tank. The light goes off, the pipe should be safer now. Although the fuel tank is of course still dangerous. So take this other nacelle off. Bump, bump, bump. Again we'll tether this one down. There you go. Right, so handily, we've also got these quite cheap lights up here. I'm just pulling this off. Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. Okay, so. Got to be a bit careful while we're operating around the... Um, fuel tank, so I'm going to use the precision laser just to cut these side panels off. You can, of course, while you're aiming at nothing particularly valuable, Time is winding use down, the split cutter. saw Dig deep and let's finish strong. Let's do multiples of these at once. But I warn you, using the split saw, you will damage stuff, um, and it's much higher risk of explosion in my experience. So I'm just going to manually drag that down and fling that. If you try and fling anything too heavy, you object. might have a problem in that it fires you rather than nothing. Yoink. There. Okay, didn't quite mean to do that. Let's just fling the bed down there. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Okay, that's my shift over. 15 minutes. <coughs> I wasn't moving very quickly there because I was commentating, so we made 700,000. And you can look at the work order to make sure what jobs you've done. I've done the data drive and the nano carbon thus far. We've still got three computer terminals, metal. Uh, a nacelle, three electrical components, and the reactor. 
which we'll do on the next shift. So straight back in. But it goes in the furnace. Deposit accepted. Right, so when it's highlights blue there, it's likely to be movable by your grapple. So what we're going to do is just pull that out. Yoink. We'll see if this one is movable. It is. So yoink. Is that okay? Right, hang on. Valuable object processed. Credit awarded. It's grabbing hold of something there and I'm not I wasn't asking it to. Maybe that would be better. Okay. Right, what we're going to do is... So we'll just slide the fuel tank out. Pop the fuel tank away. That gets rid of some of the chance of it. Exploding. Now there is a cut point around the bottom of this pipe here. And now the lights are not on. I should be able to cut this cleanly. And that is processor fodder. Because I don't usually find it useful to um, remove the switch on there. And let's take the rest of the nanocarbon here. Okay, clean. So that's one side of the ship done. So we can now go and repeat much of the same thing on the other side. You can use your hands to move around, so just you know. Valuable object Credit deposited. Okay, this purple barrel here, just up to my right, is a power cell. If you want to know what things are, you just click on the scanner, cycle through its modes, and it will tell you. Power cell microreactor for powering ships without the use of a power generator subsystem. Cut level one. So, just gives you some information so you can learn for yourself how to disassemble the ship in safety, plus it's uh, trial and error, really. You develop ways of working which kind of maximise your safety and your return. And of course as you, uh, you go up levels you unlock better equipment. Deposit accepted. Credit okay. transferred. So this is the airlock side, so we have to squeeze past the airlock. Let's empty this fuel tank. Make sure the pipe can be removed. There we go. Just be careful about my cut line here. I don't want to put my laser through the fuel tank. Yeah. Might be a bad idea. Just nudge that out, and again, just a tether. I'm going to get the light off. Nope. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Salvage secured. And doing this close to the fuel tank might be a, a bad idea. Nope, we're okay. Uh, you can rotate items that you are tethering. But I don't think I'll need to in this case. Bonk, it goes down. 
We can now cut this. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Without any problems. You can tell by the kind of country style uh, guitar in the background that this is very much a uh, Firefly style game. Of course, you could say that it's also inspired by uh, The Expanse. Because you imagine this kind of thing happening in The Expanse. And interestingly, the art style for the ships and the space stations is very much uh, Chris Foss, if you remember his work on science fiction novels. Certainly from uh, my era. Okay, so I should be able to now move these. So you can see if you yank something out inappropriate. Processing valuable object. Credits awarded. This is a bit too heavy to manipulate with my cutter, but, uh, with my grapple, but hopefully some extra uh, tethers will um, do the job. Alright, so we've taken out the floors and the ceilings. That should allow us to get some of these other things out. Salvage deposit accepted. Credits transferred. These cargo elements. The door is for Salvage the processor. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Right, now we get to the interesting part. This is where we get to the reactor. Here she is. That is a grade one reactor. It's extremely well. It's a nuclear device, so um, you know, take care. Um, this is the device you need a key for in order to remove fuel from the thruster, and the thruster is back here in the engine bay. Um, you can remove it without a key. Um, it's cheaper doing it that way, but the fuel pipes can rupture and it causes all sorts of damage. So you know, ought to be a little bit careful, I think. In the meantime, we'll just we'll just uh, do our work here. Clear these items out of the way. Yoink! If there is a word to describe this uh, game, it would be yoink. Right, these are oxygen tanks. I'm just gonna grab them. They top up my oxygen. Credits deposited. Just can take out the atmospheric regulator. Now this is going to spark horribly, but we'll take it out and quickly fire it away before it can do too much in the way of damage. Right. Just going to sack this. Right. This uh, hatch collar goes in the process. Uh, starting to get down to nitty gritty. Right, that power cell on the other side of the ship here. There we go. So again, this is going to spark horribly, so we'll just be a bit careful. Ah! Oh, it locks. Right. I thought I was doomed. Credit applied. Okay, so we've got those things out. Let's take the. Let's uh, do the dangerous stunt with the thruster. I you, would you normally use a key here because it's most worth it. But, oops. Don't want to take the reactor out prematurely. Let's take the floor out. Oh, there is a key. Okay, well, seeing as we've got a key... Oh no, I've already removed power from the unit. Never mind. Right, 
Right, I think I want to remove the... Um, remove this panel and then get rid of the reactor before I try and do anything funky with the um, thrusters. Cutter, there's five minutes remaining in this ship. Get in while the getting's good. Uh, we were up. We'll do, Weaver. Thank you. Uh, Weaver's your mentor on this particular mission. No. Salvage deposit accepted. So I'm going to yoink this reactor out by using a tether, but um, you can manoeuvre it with a bit more care. Right, pull and pull away. Okay. Salvage Reactor's in. Secured. Credits deposited. So let's see if the switch works. Emergency override. Right, that should uh, remove. Allow me to remove the thruster. Just cut these out. Uh, the easiest way to get the thruster is from the back. There she is. There are side panels here which hold the thruster plate in place. And then the back cover should pop out. Then what we'll do is just yank this out backwards, tether it, and yoink into the barge. Okay. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. So we'll just move this out of the way, and we've got. Now most of this is metal, so let's just check our work order. We need computer terminals, which will be in the um, cockpit for this ship. So what we can do is yank this into the furnace, as it's predominantly aluminium, which means the metal score. Then once that's gone, we'll yank the, um, the stern here into the processor, because it's mostly nano carbon. Uh, the heavier the part, the more tethers you might want to uh, speed it to its destination. Now we've got two minutes, can we get the computer parts that we want? I think we might be able to. If we can navigate all these storage units. See, I was penalised there for uh, the amount of deposit accepted. Credit transferred. Nano carbonite parts in. Whoops. Right, that's one computer. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. We're on one minute thirty-five. We might be able to do this. Okay, and that's the last bit of the work order. Everything else now is gravy. Work order complete. That's the second chair. There are some more computing components in here. Whoops. Maybe. Alright, Cutter. Wrap it up. You got about a minute left. Now, I could spend time taking this uh, further apart. If I had the work order for it, I would. Um, but as it is, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just pop it in the processor. Nano carbon is worth more than um, worth more than aluminium typically. So, oh look, one of our lights. They're hardly worth anything, so I can either chuck them away or put them in the barge if I'm really feeling. Valuable object processed. Okay. Credits awarded. 
So, 20 seconds left, shift over, we have done the whole buffalo, as they say. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. There we go, 2.5 million. Most of that comes in the reactor, but we've got, you know, you can check what each thing is worth, whether it's worth saving things or destroying it, but half a million for the reactor. 135k for the airlock consoles, 300k from nanocarbon, plus another 471 for nanocarbon. So, nanocarbon is very expensive, whereas uranium, aluminium, aluminium, or titanium, not so valuable. Okay, and that is it. I just wanted to show you a uh, hard space ship breaker. Uh, I might do one of the larger ships next time, but. Um, just for now, thank you for joining me, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.